Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly Channel. My name is John, and today I'm going to help you assemble your portable power lift basketball system with a 54 inch polycarbonate steel frame backboard. Before we get started, make sure the model number of your basketball system is listed in the description below. This video will follow the steps outlined in the assembly manual that comes with the system. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the description below for a timestamp associated with each step. Now let's take a look at what comes inside the box. There are steps within this assembly that require two people, so be sure to have at least one other adult available to help. Before we get into the assembly process, let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need two 3 quarter inch wrenches, two half inch wrenches, two 9 16 wrenches, two 3 16 Allen keys, which are included, a rubber mallet, a Phillips head screwdriver, a half inch socket, a 3 8 socket, a Phillips head bit, a drill, you may see us use an impact driver, if you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware, and a tape measure. To make this easier, we're going to use a 3 16 hex head socket, a socket set, and a socket adapter. Depending on how you decide to fill the base of your system, you'll also need a hose connected to a water source or a funnel and 340 pounds of sand. This video is meant to be used as a companion to the assembly manual and not a direct replacement. So for the best results, make sure to have the assembly manual on hand during the build. It's also crucial that you refer to the assembly manual to review the safety instructions for this build to prevent serious injury or property damage. All right, let's get started. Take the top pole, which is the pole that has these two holes close together and insert the hardware oriented like this. Take the middle pole, which is the one with the warning label, and slide it into the bottom of the top pole, making sure the slot at the top of the middle pole lines up with the small hole at the bottom of the top pole. Add the hardware to the hole. It's normal if the hardware spins freely after it's inserted. Attach the bottom pole to the middle pole using the same method. Before moving on to the next steps, make sure you've done the previous steps properly because they are irreversible. Seat the poles together by striking each end on a piece of scrap wood or cardboard five or six times. You're going to need to use some force, so be careful not to hit your toes. Locate these small holes on the top and middle pole, and then use the self-tapping screws to secure them together. They are designed to go through the metal underneath. If you realize you've put the poles together in the wrong order, click on this link here to see a video on how to separate them. Add the cap to the base, making sure that this gasket is on the inside of the cap. Line up the holes in the bottom pole with the holes in the base, making sure that the crimped edge is facing up. Then slide your axle through the holes in the base and the pole, making sure to add your wheels into these cutouts.
Attach the flat end of the pole brace to the base, making sure the angled end is oriented like this. Only finger tighten this hardware for now. Make sure the other end of the pole braces are flat against the pole like this, line up the holes and secure with the hardware. Lay the system down and don't stand it back up until you have proper weight in the base. Now you can tighten this hardware at the other end of the pole braces. Take the backboard brackets and attach them to the backboard, making sure they're oriented like this. Take your rim pivot bracket and insert the carriage bolts like this. Take the axle and slide the push nut onto one end, making sure it's oriented like this, and slide it down no more than a quarter inch. To make this easier, we're going to use a half inch socket. Be very careful while you do this, otherwise removing the push nut can be very difficult. Line up the holes in the rim pivot bracket with these holes in the rim, making sure it's oriented like this, and then slide your axle in and secure the other side with the other push nut. Slide the U-bolt into these holes in the bracket like this, and then slide them onto these holes into the backboard. Place the finger guard onto the rim like this, then place the bolts in the rim pivot bracket into these holes on the backboard. Make sure the U-bolt goes into the other holes on the rim and then add the hardware onto the bolts in the rim pivot bracket. Thread the jam nuts all the way down the threads on the U-bolt. Place the springs over the U-bolt. Then place the spring retainer plate over the springs. Then add the nuts.
Only tighten the hardware enough so that the rim doesn't wobble. Place the cover plate here, oriented like this, and secure with the hardware. Add the short extension arms to these holes on the backboard brackets, making sure to add your spacers. Tighten the hardware, but only until the bolt is flush with the end of the nut. Attach the long extension arms to these holes on the backboard brackets, making sure that these two holes that are close together are further away from the backboard. Only finger tighten this hardware for now. Attach these short extension arms to the top hole on the pole, making sure to go through the top holes on these short extension arms. Tighten until the bolt is flush with the end of the nut. Attach your longer extension arms to these set of holes on the pole, making sure to go through these holes on the long extension arm. It may be helpful to have someone lift the assembly up to get the holes to line up. Only finger tighten this hardware for now. Place the gas spring cover over the gas spring like this, and then attach this end to the pull bracket with the hardware. Place the trigger into the handle like this, and then add the hardware to secure them together. Slide the release pin into this location on the gas spring. Connect the handle to the pole through these holes, making sure to add your spacers. Lift the handle so that the release pin sits into these channels on the trigger. Add the lifter arms between the trigger and the handle and then secure everything together with the hardware.
Now you can tighten all the hardware on the handle. Connect the other end of the lifter arms to the inside of the long extension arms. Now you can tighten all the harbor on the long extension arms. Apply the grease onto the release pin. Now go ahead and remove the plastic film from the backboard. Place the center frame pad underneath the rim oriented like this and then secure with the self-tapping screws. They will be going through the metal underneath. Add the corner frame pads using the same method, keeping in mind they will overlap the center frame pad. The next few steps, we'll go over how to fill the base of your system. So refer to your manual in section six to see how to do that. Or you can click on this link here to see a video on how to do that. We've already filled the base of this system, so we're going to move on to the next step. Now you can attach the net to the rim. With the help of another person, raise the assembly up until the rim measures 10 feet from the plane surface. Once the rim measures 10 feet from the plane surface, place a sticker on the gas spring just below the cover. Now go ahead and place the cap on top of the pole. Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your lifetime portable power lift basketball system with a 54 inch polycarbonate steel frame backboard. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.